Mark in the count. The swing arm now coming back as our countdown continues. Hello, good evening. Yeah, it should be evening ish. Uh, welcome to the Brick Something News. Today is a, a bit of a, a special day because I believe we were just talking about this backstage. I believe this is the first ever pre recorded for my regular Sunday edition. So um, if you're wondering, like, hey, where's the live chat? Um, it's not there because myself and my guest today, Jonathan from Hedgehog Action, um, are doing this couple days before it airs so speaking of jonathan what's going on and welcome to the channel man what's going on man thank you so much for having me on i'm very excited to be here i do think you've made a wise choice pre-recording this episode yeah because you bring me on who knows what's gonna happen right <laughs> and that can <laughs> cut out all the weirdness that jonathan gets up to yeah who knows man all of the hijinks and chicanery yeah now but yeah. seriously man thanks for having me on dude and you know, of course, you know why I'm pre-recording, because the plan is this weekend, I'm traveling a couple hours, not that far, up to Sacramento for the Mythic Meetup West Coast. Mm -hmm. We actually get to have um, some a little bit of sort of War Horseman convention action out here. Of course, it's a little bit more street teamy. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I know you... Um, so I kind of like intentionally did this sort of block of a little bit more four horsemen type stuff with Trevor than is than you um, mm -hmm. to kind of honor that. But I know you're like a, I don't know, a veteran of four horsemen uh, conventions where they're either there as a studio or Legion's con, right? That That is true. And that's because I'm a lot of it is I'm just lucky enough to live yeah. in new jersey which exactly. uh, is the four horsemen's home state so i've had the luxury of being close by to mm -hmm. their main convention every year legions con i've been to legions con the last three years in a row oh, wow also there are a number of other shows that the four horsemen have traditionally had a presence at around here including toy con new jersey is probably the the biggest one that they're at every one of those shows mm -hmm. um zolo con retro con and although, thankfully, the horsemen are kind of branching out to more and more shows across the country, both by, you know, going out to the shows themselves, but also going through the, the street team yep. uh, setup, uh, it's still the, the Northeast is still going to have the highest concentration of four horsemen yes. presence at uh, shows. So I've been really lucky in that regard. Yeah, because ultimately, if folks um, aren't familiar with it or haven't really stopped to think about why, they've got to ship a bunch of product mm -hmm. to get to, or uh, maybe not ship, or get the product to whatever the, the place is. And of course, it's easier for them in the studio to load up a truck just like anybody else would drive out. So you got to figure out your driving distance. And, and the nice thing about that is wherever they can drive. So can you. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, I'm just curious if you, because I, I believe, so backstory, I, you and I connected first on Geek Dad Life, whether it was like live chats, and then we both became uh, members of the Patreon, and then we'd see each other in the Discord. And then we were just sort of saying that like, we kind of got into this whole YouTube thing right around the same time. You, uh, Chris, Shiny Plastic People, um, mm -hmm. Uh, Allison Troy, Alpha Magnus, like some of them were doing things a little longer, but there were a couple of us all kind of just starting channels and, and it was neat because we were all there. And then of course, folks like Toy Connections was there, Ken and mm -hmm. just a bunch of other folks. So um, it's kind of nice. I, and, and I was also sort of saying like, man, why haven't I had you on here sooner? So shame on me and welcome to you, friend. Not at all, man. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to be here. And, and it's cool, like, yeah, we talk about this all the time on on our shows, and and a lot of people say the same thing that, listen, we love you know these things. They're fun, and yeah. it's cool to make connections with people that have like interests. But it really it is about the different communities and and connections. Yeah. Um. So it's cool having like this little 
sub community that I check mm -hmm. in on, you know, through the discord. And even like, it's funny when, when you see like a friendly avatar or, or yeah. a friendly screen yeah. name in like another chat, you're like, Oh my God, brick, something's here. I didn't yeah. know he was into this. Oh, cool. Yeah. You know? So uh, I love that, man. And there's a lot of support there too. Um, yeah. Like, you know, we share the different things that we're doing in, in that discord. And I, I really love that people try to show up for each other. And I know I really appreciate it. It's, it's just cool, man. Yeah, absolutely. Can I ask about, so since I am sort of potentially at, at Mythic Meetup right now in Sacramento or maybe driving home, um, mm -hmm. I'm curious, uh, did we get into Legions around the same time? How? Because it feels like we haven't, based on your content and stuff. When did you get into Legions? What's your Legion story, your four horse story? Probably. So I first started becoming interested in Legions at all. Uh, I, I wish I had had been in it in, in it like the for, throughout the Kickstarter days and mm -hmm. Gothatropolis and stuff like that. But that's not how it happened. I really learned about Legions and became interested through Toy Galaxy initially uh -huh. of all things. OK, OK. Uh, through like the top 10 lists. Uh, Carpathius was on a, the top 10 vampire action figures video they did. Uh -huh. Hagnon was like a top 10 of the year for like 2018 or something. So. Really, it was around that maybe end of 2018 into 2019 is when I really started being interested in the line at all online and checking it out. Mm -hmm. um, and it probably was maybe late 2019, okay. maybe even to 2020 when I ordered my first figures. Um, I, the first pre-order from the Four Horsemen that I ever got in on was Alithia. So I was in on oh, the okay. initial pre-order for Alithia. But the first figures that I got in my hands were uh, Baron Voligar and Lord Dragul from BBTS and Gadriel. I actually checked uh, on this uh, a while ago, and Gadriel was actually the first one that I ordered. And I huh. did not remember that. But the first ones I got in hand were Dragul and, um, and Baron Voligar. So that's right around 2020 was probably when I first had the figures in hand. Um but it's funny you mentioned the show thing and that, you know, I, I said that I was lucky enough to go to a bunch of shows where the four horsemen are at mm -hmm. uh, the thing that really knocked it out of the park for me. So after I had been getting the figures, ordering figures, getting in on some pre-orders, the first show that I went to the first big New Jersey show still kind of during, but post pandemic. So early 2021, maybe, well, maybe it was May. Uh, I went to the show where the four horsemen were at and bought a bunch of Arathir figures from the Four uh, Horsemen now that I knew nice. who they were. See, the and that convention. experience was like, I was done after that. That's awesome, in. man. Yep. That's great. And do you remember meeting folks at that first show that like, yeah. Yeah, I love it. it's well, funny story. And I've told this a few times. Well, I mean, I met <clears throat> the Corn Boy was there. I knew of him uh -huh. before and some of the other guys and took some pictures and stuff. But another person that I met for the first time that day was Bill from the Dork Lair. Oh, cool. Um, so cool. through in, from 2020 into 2021, I had started watching the Dork Lair channel. That was mm -hmm. another big thing that helped me sink deeper into the line, watching his old Legion's reviews. Yeah, yeah. But then I had hit him up on Twitter because I, I didn't know anything, but I was excited about it. So I would like hit him with this question, hit him with that question. And he was always really cool. And yeah. we started like talking back and forth or whatever. And so when this show was coming up, I messaged him and say, hey, any chance you're coming down, I'm going to go. It'd be cool to say what's up. And he's like, I'm not sure yet, but I'll let you know. And then like the morning of the show, he messages me. He's like, I'm here. <laughs> oh, nice, like, oh, nice. Cool, that's awesome. So I went and I and that was a show. A lot of people were there that like D Amazing was there. Mm -hmm. Jay Hernandez was there. Oh, like, a bunch man. of people were there. Yeah. And so I was waiting in this big giant line outside. And by the time I got there, Bill had already been there for a few hours. He was ready to leave. Like he's from Boston. What he'll do in that situation, it's crazy. He'll get up at like four in the morning, hop in the car, drive down to New Jersey, spend a few hours at the show and then drive back. So by the time I got there, he was ready to leave. Mm -hmm. But he came and found me in line. And that's how wow. we met. We met in the line and he stood with me and we just chatted for like. I don't know, like a half an hour, maybe, maybe more as the line progressed. And by the time I got to the front, he was like, all right, man, have fun. I'm, I'm going to, you know, 
uh, I'm going to take off. So he was on his way out and he stayed like an extra 40 minutes just talking. To him. And I was out. like, well, that was really cool. He didn't have to do that. So it was awesome. Yeah, that I mean, that's what's up. Like the reality is like, you know, to, to put brass tacks on it, like we're a bunch of older people, mostly dudes. And that's the reality. Um, Legions mm -hmm. is different, I found. And I love that. Mm -hmm. Um and you know it's it's just cool to find community with other folks who are like oh yeah we're really into this thing and then also it's like we're older i i've found that we tend to be a lot more chill than maybe if we were all <laughs> in our 20s and it's kind of like oh yeah we love this stuff and i don't know i just feel like i'm really enjoying this sort of phase of life if you will and a lot of it of course has to do with the toys themselves but as you've said already it's this man is hanging out with people, meeting people. You got to meet Bill at a show. And I don't know. It's it it's it's kind of rad. And of course, as as many people have talked about, the Legion's community is particularly it feels particularly special um, in that way. And I think a lot of that also has to do with the way there's like an infrastructure for people to come together, whether that's the cabal itself, of course. Right. Mm -hmm. Even the the unveiling of new lines at G-Con is is an event. Right. So. Mm -hmm. There, in the world of streaming, there are very few events where people know on this day we have to be there watching, right? So mm -hmm. there's all of that stuff. And of course, the conventions, um, which again, got to say, constantly jealous when I see you all getting together, which is why I'm excited about the, mm -hmm. the Mythic Meetup. Um, so all of that is good. So anyways, that's cool, man. I was just looking as you were talking. I was like going back on this screen over here trying to figure out when was my first figure. So I actually didn't get my first figures until... Um, it was a reinforcement sale in 2022. Mm -hmm. So I, remember. I ordered them. Yeah. February, 2022. So a little much later, I think after than than you. And so it was like, okay, cool. I, by that time I had been watching, I'd actually been watching the shows mm -hmm. and even signed up, um, on the cabal just to kind of understand it without having had a figure in hand. Um, and so, yeah, those are my first and then kind of went from there. Uh, what, a, what a great introduction though I, I remember that reinforcements wave had great it had the goblin legion builder yep um it had the the um the barbarian builder set uh -huh. you know the mm -hmm. big set mm -hmm. yep um and one of my favorites of all time the black knight was in that was in that uh -huh. wave too mm -hmm. so i got the dwarf and the goblin builder mm -hmm. um those were my first two and so you're right. They were great, but it was really tricky because it was reinforcement sale. Uh, re uh, sorry, it was an in stock sort of deal. I ordered it, got it a month later. The two figures that I just told you were twenty five dollars each. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit like not exactly what the experience would be as we move forward, but it was cool. And and on the other end, they're both builders, so less deco. And I was like, damn, these are dope. So by the time I got like non-builder figures i was like whoa um so anyway that's that's our legions uh story that feels like just a thing that should be covered uh when when we do this and by the way i'll be there this year i think you you've heard this i know you've heard mm -hmm. this i'll be there this year so i'm happy we can get connect face to face so that'll be fun that'll be a, that's gonna be a cool day man and i, I was mm -hmm. wanted to say is like i'm so excited for you know people on the west coast with the mythic meetup to have like i think everybody that's a fan of this deserves to have that experience yeah. of yeah look here's some of us all in the same room here's some of the stuff it's really mm -hmm. cool to finally get those people together and man when you come for for legions and you said you're going to intern as well right is that yes true? Is that right? yes yeah that is true and i'm mm -hmm. happy my plus one will be my brother who has just started to get into the line this year um so oh that's really cool yes yeah i'm really excited man i will be i will be there as well at Dude. intern um and having done it once before a couple years ago such a cool experience and and i know we're you know we probably not going to talk for us the whole time but no it, it's I think okay. it's only been just, 14 minutes. They deserve that. That, you know, sort of bespeaks of uh, what's one of the things that's so great about the community and the line is that the guys in charge of it, the company, the studio mm -hmm. yep. involves the fans so much and uh -huh. integrates them and cares about what they think and listens to them and, and explains things and lets them vote on things and is yep. in the community meeting them and, and talking to them. And that just that hook that 
brings you back that makes you want to stay here you know what i mean so i I think they've gotten that so right you know the way Mm -hmm. they've sort of set up this whole scenario um of just being part of the community not just selling stuff to the community you know 100 percent 100 percent um cool well yes that's uh the first 15 minutes was about legions because that's where i'm likely at right now Mm-hmm. either um finishing up driving home um and i hope i didn't spend too much money because man it's already been a weirdly expensive year with like the awok stuff happening and mm-hmm. um but and uh, but anyway uh let's let's move on and let's keep it a little bit uh let's well actually so on the bottom i need to to remind myself and the folks watching um I am a visual person and, you know, as people talk about stuff, it's like, oh, man, they've been talking for like the last 15 minutes. I want to see stuff. I want to know what they're talking about. And we're going to be talking a lot about toys and all this news. So like, duh, y'all should be able to not only see it on the screen, but I want people to click and find that stuff themselves. So you'll see a URL sort of, oh, there it is over by Jonathan that way. And it's coming a bit.ly slash brick something news, capital B, capital S. Capital News, um, aka the BS News, because as you'll soon find out, some of it's newsy, some of it's just me and a buddy BSing about cool stuff that we saw. Um, what I also want to show you is that there is the, a QR code that'll be down there, over there, occasionally, so you can use that as well if you're young and fancy. Okay, so the first segment is let's uh, the scene, the stuff that we actually talk about that we've seen, and let me go ahead and move us there you go first and foremost uh let's see by the time this airs it would have been much earlier right about a week before i want to say um this popped up on instagram and the cabal as a tease from the four horsemen studios and they had this sort of message transmission received our agents in the field have once again intercepted a tusk transmission dot 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 So uh, we knew that there was a bit of a teaser. They were going to show us something. And like uh, we were just talking about Legion's Con. At every Legion's Con, there are exclusive figures. Uh, Well, there are figures that are revealed, the convention figures, that often that do have an exclusive bit in them. And then they'll repackage them and sell them as standard figures without those sort of exclusive to the con pieces. So that's what this was the tease for, for the uh, exclusive cosmic figure or figures, right? I don't know that it was that we knew. Um, I'm curious if we could rewind a little bit. What were your personal thoughts when you saw this? Your guesses, your wonderings, and so on. Yeah, well, I mean, at this point, we know it's cosmic, right? Yeah. And when with the the story that was sort of released with the teases Mm -hmm. um it had me thinking you know some type of aliens maybe different like swappable like capabilities and um what's funny was this picture in particular had me Mm -hmm. really pumped up for um these this this pink or fuchsia whatever you want to call it my wife says i'm colorblind uh color here had me excited for some real bright colored parts yeah. this color is reminiscent of like a, a pink fleshy head that came with one of the wave one cosmic legion figures so i was pretty pumped up about it oh right 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 uh-huh. the, the science officer has yep. like this crazy organic head um but as they sometimes do the four horsemen were swerving us just a little bit with this tease they were um, for me. I I just didn't even. I uh, again. I knew. Yeah, Cosmic Legion. Got it. I didn't. I was like, oh, text. Great. I'm not even going to try to trans. You know, whatever. I was just sort of looking at it. That's cool. Love the world building. I also looked at the hands and it was like, oh, where are those coming from? And those are are those are Thigar's hands, right? The, yeah, I, the I believe ring. that they're. Yeah, that they're Thigar hands that were like yeah. color changed, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the computer, as they say. And so um, I looked at, in the computer, uh, I got the sense of like maybe DNA manipulation, cloning some kind of mad science type thing. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, are we going to get like, you know, kind of like hybrid alien type things? Or like, I don't know. I didn't really think much beyond that. I just, like you, I looked at dope, different color uh, parts. I completely didn't even connect it to that, that matching potential head. That was great. Mm-hmm. I saw the um, gauntlets. I was like, oh, that's a different sort of like light gauntlet. That's mm-hmm. cool. 
beyond that, didn't think much else. We'd already sort of seen um, the Mythic Legions, right? Con figures. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that made sense. And then we got this revealed. Uh, this was our yesterday. Um, anyways, earlier in the week for the people watching this on Sunday. So it's uh, two figures. Uh, tell us about what you're what we're seeing here all right so this is so i guess the whole kind of the whole plot behind it is that there's some uh, experiments that have sort of gone wrong and these are some of the products here experimentor and experimentee but from a real world collector's perspective it's a massive loaded set with yeah. just tons of stuff so mm -hmm. uh, it's a a I, I look at it two ways, really, like anybody that's already into customizing, which is, again, one of the biggest aspects of the the legions lines. This yep. is a customizer's dream because there's so many different parts, so many different things to do. But for somebody that's like just getting into le legions and it hasn't really dipped their toe into the whole popping and swapping thing. You have, if you have nothing else, <laughs> this set gives you endless possibilities and some really cool color uh, choices here, too. Um, where you don't get the bright pinks. There's some cool purples and stuff like that. There's mm -hmm. some cool metallics. Um, uh, the guy on the left, there's a couple cool things about Oops. him. Number yep. one, the color scheme when he gets the helmet on reminds me of Boba Fett. Um, it totally does. And right there. The, uh, the bearded head is the head from a figure called Magnus from Arathir, Mm -hmm. which is a very, very sought after figure these days. And it's cool to get that head back out into circulation as, as part of this pack. Um, yeah. It's just a loaded set with it's, you know, it's a mini collection in one box. It really is. And so it's funny because you were saying for a new collector, um, this is great. And I, I love that. I love that they're thinking that way because you know, Legions has been around for a while. People are popping in at different times. I came in a lot later than you did a couple years after. And so I was just saying that my brother's going to be coming with me to um, to G-Con and, and intern for a day. And he's new to the line too. And so I'm thinking about that. And while we're just on the heels of the mysteries of Mythos, which uh, I didn't, I haven't checked. Is it, is I, I heard that they were saying five less than 500 do you have do you happen to know if that's still going it's done they are done they have 100% okay. sold out of the mystery okay. boxes yep so on that note it's like i i love that they're thinking that way and re, you know clearly like there are some of the folks who have been around were like oh mysteries and mythos whatever they're like concerned about blind boxes or you know they have them already got it but any company regardless of how successful they are even though they've built up this huge fan base and you know clearly a big fan community you want to think about those folks who could give them an entry point and so between mysteries of mythos which was an opportunity to get a bunch of old figures as well as newer product and even if you're like well i have the newer product it's what you said it's like every legions figure is a box of dope parts even if you already <laughs> have one right Yep. So I, I know a lot of people who who went really hard on Mysteries and Mythos who have been in it for about a year now, and they're just like, cool, it's all new to me, and and I'm excited by all the different options. And again, there's the game of like, oh, well, I can trade, and we, there's that infrastructure again of a community where you can do that. Mm -hmm. And here you go with this Legions Con exclusive, just as you say, packed with really cool parts and really cool colorway. That armor, it's it's definitely more on this sort of like rugged military mm -hmm. end of things, like really drab, right? It's not the bright color of like the Novian lean, even the head of the Novian lean alien, right? Is a little bit more on the, um, I guess more natural colors than the bright green and yellow. That's, yeah, you know what I mean? Um, so it's just kind of cool. If you're, if you've been around, you're like, great. I got these parts in different colors. If you're new, man, you're even getting like legions vampires in this dope like bright red bright yellow eyes this helmet is really cool i'm glad that they're mm -hmm. maximizing that and so it's cool um yeah man I, I it's great stuff and i haven't even flipped through but of course all the photos are dope trevor who was our um our guest host two weeks ago 
um, shot these. Love them. There's that helmet that you're talking about. Yep. Total fat, man. Uh, but, you know, slightly different. No yellows. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, no, the gold yellow is not there. But yeah. You but if you like, got a Novian lean, though. Yes, 100%. You can actually <laughs> pull, pull that right over. And yep. somebody else had said this with the Novian lean head. It's almost like a Boba Fett versus Predator set. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally yeah. like totally like fan casting it but yeah i mean and it's just kind of cool to get like all these different parts and mm -hmm. you know again with the with another thing tools it's the first fully right am i saying this right the first full cosmic legions con exclusive um where it's all just straight cosmic so the oh because last year walter. there was the, the walter hagen two-pack was half yeah. cosmic half mythic so not that it matters that, that much but here's a full cosmic set with a yeah. bunch of cosmic parts and pieces and weapons and also you know the the, the magnus head is is initially from uh from mythics but it's just a, a cool juxtaposition uh against the the con exclusives from day one which are fully mythic yep and here are the uh the action shots um environmental shots i don't know what what he calls them but this is again trevor's work and i love these are my favorite parts whenever they reveal the figures it's like i absolutely love seeing the you know the product shots especially as they're beautifully lit and i can really kind of study and see the parts and everything but then show me these characters sort of in in the world and that's so cool that head yeah. looks it really brings life and Trevor's Trevor's the best, you know, mm -hmm. um, and he's, he's a friend, but he's a fantastic, fantastic photographer. And you're right. His photographs really bring the characters to life. And you're like now that, okay, that figure now is a character and a story. Um, speaking of which, did you ever get, have you ever gotten a Trevor uh, calendar? He does the one I do. For calendars. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Did you change it to, to May? I have not yet. I don't use it as a calendar, to be honest. I just kind of flip <laughs> through them. So okay. I must have seen it. What's what's May? It's a it's a it's a picture that he 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 put out. Uh, I think last year, but it's a cosmic photo where like the cosmic characters are like storming through the through the prison or whatever, and it's yep. a it's a shootout. It's a firefight. Yep, yep, yep. Pew pew, pew pew. I love it. And then here's the other character. I have not even like done my due diligence. I've been so busy at work that like, I don't even know the story. So you said experimenter and experimentee. Who's the experimenter and who's the experiment? Yeah, so loosely, uh, and, and it's loosely is that there were some experiments going on and uh -huh. then something went wrong and then everything kind of blew up. So, uh, I think that the Magnus type character is like was one of the experimenters, but I don't even know that for sure. I, I just knew that it was some type of cosmic experiments gone awry. Gotcha. And then this is like a, a piece of that story. So that's why it's the, the name of the two pack is amazing, amazing aliens and creatures creators. So I think the Novian is the alien aspect of it. And the, I keep calling him the, the, the Magnus guy is the creator. Although sure. I, He's not actually supposed to be human per se, humanoid. Right, right. He is humanoid, not human is what you're saying. Right, correct, yeah. yes. Um, it's funny, now that you say it that way and, and we're talking about, you're, you're saying I'm not sure who the experimenter is, I go back to the T's and so maybe, because I just put two and two together, realize these hands aren't in the pack. So no, so this, it's a whole other person? That's, or did they, that's, did they address it? Uh, that so my understanding is is that 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 was the swerve I was talking about is that the character we see here uh -huh. is not part of the the two pack. This right. is I believe it's just a, supposedly like a science officer, but oh, like okay. with, you now you can see his hands and he's sending out like the distress signal or whatever. Like hey, Got it. everything's gone nuts. <laughs> this this is what's happened. Send help type deal. Got but it. I don't know. There's, I gotta, as a fan, and I don't know anything, I gotta assume that's not by accident either. I, I gotta assume that there must be maybe another version of the science officer or something else coming down the mm -hmm. line where these colors come into play. Gotta be. And I, I, I guess I was thinking more so that this could be the experimenter or one of the experimenters. So they're like completely different that, 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 and then maybe the other two are just experiments. But um, maybe not. Yeah, I don't maybe. know. What do we know? That, listen, and, and all of that could potentially change anyway. So it's true. 
And but it's a cool set, man. Once mm -hmm. you get them in hand, it's all your head cannon anyway. That's how I that's how I roll anyway, mm -hmm. generally. Um, but yeah, some of these are my favorite pieces. Again, a lot of the Novian Lean stuff. This from um Vorga, Varga, Vorga, Vorga. Vorga yeah. Um, just really cool bits and bobs, and and it's really cool. And of course, seeing this, uh, I love. I, I will say I'm really partial to the saturated like the the blues of in this sort of scale thing right on, on mm -hmm. Oleg Digar or the bigger orange version of it um I just I love that but it is kind of nice and refreshing actually for this line to get something that's a little bit more earthy as as he points it out here so yeah and it's anyway. like I, I like I like having like the the variety um like I guess gun to my head what do I prefer I probably I probably gravitate towards the ostentatious, ridiculous bright colors. Me too. Um, and they do have they have a bit of uh, a bit of both. You know, the, even in the Cosmic Legions line, which is still pretty young, there's some of like this is like especially this version of the alien a little bit more quote unquote realistic um, mm -hmm. colors and stuff going on there. But they still they give you a splash of that color every once in a while with some of the other figures, and it probably yeah. has better effect that way anyway. No, it does. And it keeps it fresh and, and varied. And then on the Legion side, I feel like we're entering into that a, a moment of color with Poxus right now. Mm -hmm. And so, yep. all right, moving on, sort of four horsemen, or, well, four horsemen related still, not quite Mythic Legions, mm -hmm. Defenders of Eden, um, which was a uh, Kickstarter last year that I backed. Um, mm -hmm. And these figures are uh, sculpted. And I think there was some sort of engineering, right? Engineering uh, done and the painting by the Four Horsemen Studios and uh, Matt Rodriguez, the, the, the line's creator. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an old post. I just kind of love it because we get to kind of see the characters that folks aren't familiar because the next sort of newsy piece is that this was posted this week um, showing that, hey, we're getting there. We're, we are um, nearing the finish line. These figures clearly are are um are in their final stage in packaging so did you at all back uh armies of ashmore i i did and this is this is one of, it's it's one of those things too that once you're sort of in the community one thing sort of leads to another and i don't know if i if i wasn't sort of in like the legions community if i would have been drawn specifically to this line or not but because i i am in the community I, uh -huh. I don't know. I don't know Matt Rodriguez at all, but I know who he is um, uh -huh. and, I've met, and I've met him. Um, so I sort of learned about what he was doing with this with this line early on in the Kickstarter. And I was talking to other people that were sort of involved with it. So I was like, I got to get in and on it a little bit. So I got I think this is correct. I think I got two of like the uh, the not Brachiosaurus, but the long necked like Brontosaurus guys. No I got. Like, yes, I got the the grayscale one because i told myself i was going to paint it and then i got again i can't help it i got the spectral one the blue translucent one nice and then i got the <laughs> triceratops that i think is the kickstarter exclusive i'm not sure if i'm saying there's be something yeah. this one yes that one yeah uh -huh. so those those are the guys that i got coming uh pretty excited about it that's great man i um i you know i i'm partial to Big figures and animal-esque figures, anthropomorphic animals or dinosaurs or whatever. So I saw these and I was like, oh, great. These are going to, you know, hang out in Eternia and, you know, and then cross over to Cosmerium maybe and whatever. Hang out uh, with the AWOC characters, whatever planet they're on. I got this guy, um, Kuzu, Kuzo, C-U-Z-Z-O. Um, I got a Milwick. Uh, mm -hmm. which is that that brontosaurus or whatever that is and then this guy so i'm looking forward to them and then they're getting there i i wasn't sure what this was in terms of packaging if this is final packaging if this is like an insert with a sleeve so i don't know much um but i'm not way, sure my yeah my mm -hmm. guess is that's just for the samples or like you said it's an insert but that's just that's just my guess from looking at it and mm -hmm. And, and you reminded me when you said his name, I, sometimes I get bad with the names. Oh, um, Emil Wick, the, that is, uh, he's named after uh, Emil Wickman. Emil right? Wickman, that's right. Yeah. Yep, yep. Love it. So, um, Defenders of Eden, 
coming closer, moving on. Let's do a little bit of retro because I saw this today. And again, animals, man. Ever since I was a kid, ever since I saw this movie, apparently Ooh. the old NECA Planet of the Apes figures are being re-released as a four pack. And oh, cool. um, I, I've always wanted these and I was like, I've never gone back. They're selling for 130 at least on BBTS. So that's four figures. Uh, I might actually jump in because I, I do. Um, I want this. This is me, man. This is where it all started. I love Planet of the Apes. Um, just the 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 nature of like humanoid apes, but also like I love the 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 thought. I guess the um, where this story would take me, whether it was the themes or just this notion of. Like, do I spoil a movie? Just this notion that it takes place here on Earth in the future. Is it a spoiler? <laughs> it's it's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. It, it, uh, it is a spoiler, but y'all are slow. So um, these movies were so, and not to derail it, but no, like, they are. Yeah. Just, I have memories of being like a kid in like yeah. the nine, like in the nineties. Mm -hmm. I want to say, I'm pretty sure it was the nineties. Watching this at home as a kid on like. A and E or whatever it was, and they had like yep. a marathon of like Planet of the Apes, Battle for Planet of the Apes, Return, yep. like and Conquest. Like, yes, and I was like, uh -huh. oh, oh my god, they're just so so good. And it's funny, a couple of you know, there's the new Planet of the Apes movie is coming out. Yep. So some channel was running, um, I, I guess like kind of a marathon of this newest, this newest series of the uh -huh. of the the Planet uh Planet of the Apes. And I don't know that I had really watched them before. They're pretty good. Like oh, the newer new, ones. Yeah, the newest oh, ones. They're, they're great. Yeah, they really are so, great. So was, I'm kind of pumped up about it now. Yeah, it's definitely on my radar for this summer. I'm excited that that's coming out. Um, the, I am definitely much more partial and connected to this iteration, mm -hmm. but the new ones are great too. And you know, obviously, they have the benefit of all the new effects and and everything that they can do. But even for this time, I mean, I think, and I don't know, maybe this is my nostalgia veil. I think they look really cool. It's just weird. Like, um, anyways. You know, it's Zira. Uh, um, oh, God, I'm blanking. It's Zayas. Oh, what are my gorilla? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't dudes. I don't remember either. But um, yeah, man, I love this. It's got some cool, timey, wimey stuff in the story um, where like Zira. Oh, there you go. General Ursus. Spoiler, and then, spoiler on the back yeah, of the package. What I'm are they done. thinking? <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Um, one of the greatest and, movie scenes of all time. Absolutely. And just even the graphic design, man, I was in love with this as a kid. Like, oh, that's not even the original logo, but it was just really cool stuff. The posters, um, everything. I even sort of like borrowed that for the whole Mamba thing with um, Animal Warriors of the Kingdom with the like, we want you mm -hmm. to back a walk. So anyways, if if that's uh, any uh, appeal to anyone for me, it totally is. And I think I'm in on these. They definitely, you know, they've they've aged a little bit in terms of their lack of deco. I would love to dry brush these a little bit, but the sculpts are right on. Um, they're just ripped out of the film. Question. Did you mm -hmm. um, it was the only one that came out as far as I know when I, mean, I might have just missed it. Did you ever think about or get the Mezco Dr. Zayas? I saw those and I almost got it after uh, the fact at a, at a con. Um, but no, I never did. It, it wasn't cheap uh, mm -hmm. or, or when I saw it and um, they, they're a little bit smaller. NECA's mm -hmm. tend to fit slot in much better with kind of what I've got going on my shelf. They look gotcha. great though, but, but no. And of course the soft goods, like all of that, but, um, but I don't know. So I just, again, um, like I said, I was just going to say like, there, there, these are, un like, should I do this? I don't know. I'll figure it out. But, um, but it's like these things that are just come out of nowhere. I'm assuming it's because of the movie that they're re-releasing them, but it's like, oh, I wasn't really planning on spending $130 on like some random neck of figures. Sorry. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, I love, I know these are reissues, but one of the things I do like about NECA is that I love where they're, I love the way they think. I love the things that they think to do. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, in this case, they're re-releasing something that they sort of made before. But, you know, I mean, who's who who thinks to make an ALF figure like who thinks to yeah. like they went back and did the unreleased 
like they don't make four inch figures and they went back and did the unreleased dungeons and dragons four inch mm -hmm. figures as a con God, exclusive. Are... and then that was it yeah yeah <laughs> I like, yeah, yeah. I, I love that i mean like it's so targeted and specific i was like i just i, I love where your mind's going Nick. i do too you can totally tell there's a, a they're definitely like a they're nerdy fans who mm -hmm. understand what nerdy fans might be into and sometimes it's a kind of an oddball thing will these sell i don't know but I, I, you know, they're just like, it has to be back out in the world. And these guns, that was also my favorite thing as a kid. They just look so like familiar, but other, you know, like the, the shapes are very organic. And anyway, um, I'm a nerd. I love animals uh, for some reason. Let's talk about this. This is something that you, you brought up that you wanted to talk about. Let's talk about some Vitruvian hacks. Yeah, I'm a huge uh, hacks fan. In a lot of ways, they're like mini mythic legions. Like mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're supposed to be like modular and stuff, but they're like articulated, highly detailed four inch figures and largely based in it, their roots. Anyway, they've done like zombies and stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, in like, in like the fantasy realm. Right. So yep. they've done some re-releases recently. And these, these guys are some new, like uh, new characters, like new night characters that they're putting out. And I just, I adore the Vitruvian hacks. Um, I just think they're the coolest little figures. And I know that for modern collectors, it's, you know, six inch is rules the day. Mm -hmm. And again, most of what I collect is one twelfth scale, but it's a, a lot of that is because that's what some of the best stuff is that's coming out. Yeah. If yeah. I had a scale that spoke to me, it probably would still be four inch. Cause it's still that that's what I had as a kid. Uh -huh. So it's kind of like, even though they do, they do feel very small now yeah. in my hands as an adult. Uh, yep. Hacks sort of marries that smaller scale with a genre like fantasy that I love, but with that modern detail, incredible yep. accessories. One of my favorite figures of all time is the Vitruvian Hacks figure, Darsalk, which is kind of like a, he's like a, I don't know, like half like skinny orcish magus kind of character. Huh. And he's got like little lamps and potion bottles. And you can see with some of these newer ones, same deal. Like this guy's got yeah, like an eagle and all kinds things. of weapons. They're awesome. That eagle is dope. And I love that. I, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what the deal is. Let's see. I didn't let's go. Oh, oh God, there's even more. Um, yeah. I was wondering about this though. It, it looks like maybe does the stand go behind and on the I, back of the character? I don't maybe? know for sure. It looks like, I don't know. I was just, it looks like a swoosh. It doesn't look like a stand. It looks like it's kind of meant to simulate like maybe a pop in the back where the backpack goes. Yeah. I, I would imagine that that's gotta be hopefully very light. Otherwise, how could he possibly stand? Mm. Um, although they do all come with figure stands that work pretty well. Look at this guy. This guy looks awesome, man. This looks like, yeah, dude from, uh, what's his name? Dirk from uh, Dungeon. Oh, Man. yeah. Um, Dragon's Lair? Dragon's Lair, like yeah. when he dies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at all these cool armor, though. Is that a full head, or does that go, do you think, on top of? I think that's head? a removable head, I think. Ooh, like a sort of switchable, very swappable very head, very whatever. True. These are cool. I've never, uh, I don't have any, but I've handled them and I love them. I was, I, you know, I, I definitely am very firmly stuck in not even one twelve because it's not, it's like, you know, that, that six and a half to seven inch kind of seven world. Inch, yeah. And it's funny you say that, that, uh, it's because of your nostalgic connection to that scale. But then you, you said, but these feel really small. Like mm -hmm. what I've been saying is like, that's, I don't know if someone figured this out, but it's almost like, well, everyone's like 30 and 40 now. So mm -hmm. I know you're in say. relation to the size of their hand, this is about right. Yeah. So, and I think yeah. it's true. Like I still collect like vintage GI Joe's. That was my yeah. number one uh, toy line as a kid. And after I had not handled them in a long time, when I started collecting again and I picked one up, I was like, Goodness gracious, this seems tiny. So it is. Yeah. It's the the six inch scale. Definitely. I, I'm sure you're right about someone said, you know what? This for the modern collector, this is gonna fill that same idea somewhere deep in their their DNA. This is gonna yeah. give them the same feeling. 
Love that they're giving us like these nights of color to respect. And I appreciate that. Love the bird. This is just so cool. Love this quiver that like, you know, it was straight out of like they did their research to kind of like look at different ways that quivers are. Done. I love it. Very cool. Yeah. You don't get this level of detail at the, at this scale. I, I think it's the way people that actually make mm -hmm. toys talk about it. I think it's difficult to do and they do a, a really great job of it. Yeah, it's great. Love it. All right. Uh, speaking mm -hmm. of, uh, let's speaking of sort of, um, we're still kind of in the mythic legions realm kind of, because there was a connection, right? So Nikki Nicole, who I learned about through her legions customs and her painting back in the day, mm -hmm. um, has gone and worked on a bunch of different lines. In fact, Savage Crucible, who I just realized I didn't put in here, but I believe, um, my figures shipped today. I got to double check. Uh -huh. Cause it started shipping out today for the Kickstarter backers. Anyway, she's working on that. She's uh, painted up the awesome galactic valor um, figures that just successfully funded over on Kickstarter. And then when they announced these, yeah, when they announced these um, and that she was working on the paints for these, I was like, Oh my God, I have to get these. Cause I know they're just going to look beautiful. And then, just, you know, she's sort of sharing her work here and, I just kind of wanted to remind both myself and the audience about these because I think these are going to just be amazing. You're going to get, yeah, it's reuse, but look at that. Like these are just as it should be with, with animals, right? Just like a group of four distinct versions of the same deer. So I think they're absolutely cool. And um, I am in for one deer. I had to sort of figure out the best colorway and then, uh, related to these are also the goats. So did you go in for any deer or goats? I Fresh didn't, I did not uh -huh. yet. I only have one of the, um, one of the Santas. I love what they're doing. Like they're doing mm -hmm. so many crazy different little versions and sort of expanding the line. My wife has something of a, uh, uh, of a black Santa collection. <laughs> okay. As it were. Okay. So uh -huh. the, so the naughty or nice version was one that we sort of had to get. Um, reindeer is like an obvious next uh move on this but the thing is you kind of need eight right at least yep and they've got you and nikki's got you because they're all gonna look very distinct and very beautiful <laughs> but yeah, yeah you awesome. you can get all of them um and then of course you can get the krampus but i love these and i love um the the goat the demon the gorgon goat demon so i'm all about it um and you know just take a look at like the tack that comes with these things there's gonna be a sleigh no yeah. way there's not gonna be a sleigh so anyway. and nikki's, nikki's incredible she's one of the the really most accomplished customizing artists out there so yeah absolutely man i remember seeing her like do one of those like in studio things i forget i don't know if it was in wolfden or where it was but it was just she painted up this orc head in like minutes and it would have been even faster if she wasn't sort of talking and it looked amazing so anyway that's a deer and let's switch gears a little have you been following brutal realm at all uh i have not actually okay well so. brutal brutal realm is something that um I, that caught my eye a while back and it, I'll just go back to the beginning. It caught my eye because originally it was these sort of these figures that they were showing concept art for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've definitely got the sort of like barbarian sword and sorcery uh, kind of thing going on on my shelf, high fantasy, etc. But what I appreciated about these when they started showing them was it's like, yeah, it's that brutal realm, that era of like, you know, warriors. It's definitely a distinct body type. They're, they're they definitely wanted to go in this direction of really like massive, blocky dudes, um, sort of in the tradition of Masters of the Universe, but definitely you know much much thicker and more solid. beefier guys. Yeah, yeah. But then like the concept art, I was like, wait, like look at this, like ancient Sumerian maybe. But then I was like, okay, what's going on with this guy? What they've got like a Mongol inspired dude, a Native American dude, and I was just like, yo, this is cool. Um, uh, I'm forgetting what, Ooh, was it? I forget what people these were derived out of Africa. Um, but they're all like really well researched, but then sort of, um, you know, the fantastic end of it. Oh, Hey, look, that's me. Um, so 
I was really sort of stoked that uh, they were doing these and I've been following them. And then more recently they put this up because their Kickstarter is that they're sort of like ramping up to get it going. It's they've been talking about it for a while. I think, you know, obviously there are a bunch of other Kickstarters, so I'm sure they're just sort of like getting their stuff ready and finding the right time. But they put this post up. Uh, is it this week or last week? Just this week. And you're they're asking you to vote because they had an idea for a tier. And they were like, well, here's this thing that we've been working on. And, you know, we want to share it. But then the other option is to get women in the line, develop a women buck. So there's like this furry buck or the women and they ask you to vote. Um, like, which do you think they should do first? And here's me voting like, man, you know, like if we had women in there, the sheer variety of this line right out the gate would be awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they're going to land, but this was it. They just had this sort of like, OK, it's a hairy buck. What are they going to do with it? And then. More recently, they revealed this concept art. This so is what I, I saw today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's like tribute figure, right? I guess is sort of maybe what they're thinking with it. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting, um, interesting move, right? They're calling it the Lion Lord. Um, but it's 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 conceptual art for what might be something that they do. Um, so it was funny because this comes right on the heels of uh, Mondo sort of announcing, mm -hmm. like, it's showing their turnaround. So it was like, oh, this feels weird, weird at this moment. That's why at a distance, like at a glance, like yeah. as you're, as you're just scrolling through, I'm like, oh wait, is that more of the, uh, is that more uh, uh, renders for the Mondo thing, or is mm -hmm. it more of a uh, Jorge from Thundercat Classics, uh, his own uh, concept art? And it's, no, it's something completely different. Yeah. Just a Lino inspired barbarian guy. So, I mean, that's there. I, I think it's cool. I'm all for this kind of thing. I'm looking at the sort of like what they're going for conceptually. And it looks like he might have dreadlocks, which is cool. Um, full on beard. I don't know. Uh, I always wonder about like, at what point are we going to keep sort of like one? We've got a, a, a ton of active third party non-licensed toys out there i know mm -hmm. by trade you, you you're familiar with the law <laughs> there's certain aspects of the law so i i always kind of wonder like how when the hammer is going to kind of drop on some of this thing but this is a tribute figure as we know um and the four horsemen have done tribute figures a walks in a, a beast man tribute figure i always just sort of wonder how those things work um uh, yeah i don't i think some of it is just you know, you'll notice a lot of times people talk about like, especially with like those turtle inspired, like not mm -hmm. Ninja Turtle things where it's like, yep. it's a, it's a different company that's that's said like slightly different or entitled slightly different. Yep. I think a lot of it is just stick and move. A lot of it, if it's just small enough, the bigger companies are like, it's not worth the money to go after them. But yeah. Um, and sometimes I think probably some of it has to do with relationships, but um you know, I mean, look at look at what Ramen Toys is doing. You know, Ramen right. Toys is very upfront, like, hey, I'm doing your stuff. <laughs> so mm -hmm. maybe you should come talk to me because I can help you do this good. Um, yeah. But I think every situation is probably a little bit different. But, um, you know, I, I guess companies, if they're small enough and if they're respectful enough, sometimes some of them figure out uh, sort of a way to do it. And, you know, with this line, I hadn't seen it before, but there's the one character that clearly as soon as i looked at it like i'm like oh well that's a skeletor uh homage or at least inspired by right um it it actually isn't but yeah it's really hard to do like big buff dudes with a skeleton with face. a skeleton face yeah yeah so right like there, yeah. this guy right here definitely it's more of their like sort of army builder and it's like armor mm -hmm. but like you know yeah it's hard to get away from that connection but you know this versus this with that colorway and everything it's that's kind of this obvious, yeah. this one's a little bit more clean but yeah and then there's also this this guy here whom who you might have also looked at but so Conan. the idea is that he's he lives with a he's possessed crow man that, the barbarian and he is um he's sort of in this state where he his possession comes out and he's got a skull head anyway it's cool man are they he's uh like, so mm -hmm. it sounds like they've got some lore going on here there are they backing it up with a comic book or anything or don't nothing know. they've announced yet nothing they've announced yet so i don't know um other than that that's just sort of i the, 
what I was sharing was just what's gleaned in these little, they have descriptions here. Gotcha. So that's it. Anyway, just, it's, it's wild, man. We're, we're living in a time where there's like toy line after toy line. And it's the trippy down. thing is it's like, just look at this, like the level of detail in this, the, the, what they're trying to do with um, posability, right? And the butterfly, you can kind of see that a little bit more here. Um, and the level of uh, Ogun, that's what it is. Yeah, the, the level of research that they're doing and they're, they're you know, we thanks to the internet and, and digital tools, like it's much easier for people to kind of like, you know, collaborate from wherever. So they're getting top mm -hmm. talent. And so it's not like, oh my God, there's a bunch of new toy companies and they're like, they're okay. It's like, oh my God, there's all these toy companies and they keep like ramping up the game. So I don't know. It's super fun to be a toy collector right now and to be this like dork on YouTube watching this stuff. Like, check this out, man. Look at that photo. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes sense if you're going to be a new company, like why wouldn't you try to maximize it and push it, right? You're starting from scratch. You, you don't have a ton invested in tooling where it's like, oh, we're kind of stuck with this body type. It's like, okay, well, while we're starting from scratch, let's figure it out. So anyway, there you go, man. Cool stuff. Brutal Realm. I'm curious about this. Even if they swerve and at some point they maybe get a phone call from someone they change the colors on this guy and they're fine. So yeah. anyway, ladies and gentlemen, brick something, your pusher man uh, as he introduces bit. you to the new lines. A little bit. You were cool about it <laughs> until you want it, baby. And you know, that's because I was pushed when I saw it and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this as well. They say misery loves company. So we'll all be poor, but have lots of toys together. <laughs> Star Wars. Was Star Wars ever a thing for you? Kenner Star Wars. Hell yeah, absolutely. So I was a, and as a matter of fact, I didn't even realize this until I was an adult, but I was born the night Star Wars came out. Oh. So I was born, May. my birthday is May 26th, May mm -hmm. 26th, 1977. 97. But I was born late, late that. Yeah, so that, that like three in the morning or something like that, May 20, mm -hmm. after it turned May 26th, Technically speaking, Star Wars debuted uh, May 25th. So that night is when I nice. was born. Uh huh. Well, the Star Wars movies are my favorite movies of all time. The original trilogy. Uh, I did have Star Wars toys as a kid. Obviously, I was just born. So my first Star Wars toys, Star Wars toys were like uh, Empire reissues and Return of the mm -hmm. Jedi. But I still have some a couple of my childhood uh toys so as soon as i saw this i'm like what did they do to the death star <laughs> yeah that's exactly right this is that death star playset so i was born um i might have come onto this earth right around when you were being conceived so nine months before you in august of 76 i was mm -hmm. born and so my brother uh, is five years up on me and so by the time wow. star wars came out he was a kid who had seen it and was all about it and bugged his parents and mine uh to get him the star wars toys and then when they finally came by the time i was like conscious i had a star wars collection that is and i remember so cool. seeing this thing i remember we had this and i was just always like this was the one that i want to take down from the shelf and like play with because it was just so it, it it's a toy. It's a playset. It's a world. And so what this person, what Toy Otter, who's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, known for a lot of his like uh, uh, superpowers concepts and stuff. Concepts, yep. Mm -hmm. Took that and kind of transformed it, that original Kenner design into one that works with um, some of the Super 7 reaction alien figures and then some of the others. I don't even know what this is, what line this is. If it's... Uh, an actual line or if it's maybe like a con uh custom this is i'm pretty sure this is a custom of um paul riser's character yes. aliens so do you know did he did he print this so yeah i think he he though uh it says what started as a quick repaint of a kenner death star <gasps> ended up adding the and so he like put bits and pieces in yeah. and and adjusted it so it's kind of a frankenstein okay. and so um, but still, like, because it was based on that original sort of like playset, it's got mm -hmm. 
it's just got that charm and it fits perfectly with the reactions. So you've got like this lab and it's like, yeah, I could see that in that old little thing. And um, yeah, it's funny. Pods. Yeah. And then yeah, you can I just print out these cardboard things and slip them in. Cause that's all they were back in the day. And of course this right here, dude, the PS, the resistance like that used to be the laser that would often break mm -hmm. on ours, but you could actually make it explode. So they just threw in that thing from, uh, the first alien with the, um, oh, they have a word for it, but whatever that first sort of pilot, oh, the engineer, what the, mm -hmm. the engineer that they found his remains. So I think that's super cool. A little I was just, or whatever. I was just thinking the level of YOLO to start repainting yep. vintage Death Star. It's true. Is uh, I, yeah, I got to respect it. At first I was like, oh my God, somebody did that, but it looks so cool. It it's, does. It's, it's given it like a whole new life. And I don't know if he sold it or not, but you know, this thing isn't going to be, um, you know, super cheap. So, so oh, yeah. this is that, um, Lannard, uh, toy that you could get at, um, at Walmart back in the day. Mm -hmm. I love it. Like this whole like Whalen Utani lab and just super fun. So there you go. Um, cool. I, I love it, man. I, I dig it. Um, it's not new. It's something that that he's done in the past. But I this is the kind of thing that I love about modern toy collecting. That yes, we get cool toys by by cool people making new lines, all that kind of thing. We've got companies doing retro lines, and then you've got other folks who are like, I, you know, I want to I want to make some toys. I want to customize some toys, and it's just cool stuff. And so we didn't we didn't have these, man, back in the day. And I love yeah, it. Yeah, there's you know the heard the saying before on a on a in the toy tube universe the fans are doing the best work i think uh, that was a michael french line i believe um and a lot of that is like i don't know if it's the best but it's some of the most inspired like i love i love stuff like this creating something that sort of that didn't exist before like i love yep. you know um or when when fans and artists create characters in a line that we never got stuff like that yep absolutely um so i think it's cool it's funny when you say that I, I put in the context of what we've been talking about whether it was uh four horsemen or the brutal realms guys uh the fans are doing the best work so definitely customizers like this but like that's that's who's making toys now creating their own lines four horsemen they were fans right mm -hmm. uh the brutal realm guys are come legions collector matt rodriguez uh, legends collectors matt rodriguez another collector jason bienvenu jason, it, yep. same thing man they're the fan turned creator which brings me always back to toy connections idea of the sort of toy renaissance when the fan mm -hmm. becomes the creator okay you mentioned mondo Yes. Um, so this isn't exactly the the well, the big news this week, mm -hmm. and I actually couldn't quite find visuals. But I just I'll just quickly say that I really enjoyed Scott Pilgrim. I am a musician who like my main instrument is bass, although my first instrument is keyboards, and in my last band I played both. But mm -hmm. um, so Scott Pilgrim um, was always kind of cool, even though the character itself was, was uh, he's a little bit shady, but um, and I also love, I grew up, my my brother also had a Shogun Warrior collection, these sort of big hollow rotocast plastic figures. Mm -hmm. And so the whole vinyl toy um, thing has always appealed to me. This is not something I will get, but I love looking at it. I think he looks fantastic straight out of the, the comic slash um, old little cartoons that they were doing, little shorts. Oh, fist. But it does this, which is a very Shogun Warrior Um and just really cool. It's definitely, you know, Scott Pilgrim's got that kind of stuff going on in different comics and in the Netflix show or fantastic moments. Cool looking thing. Um, I don't know. Are you a vinyl guy at all or even just an appreciator? I can definitely appreciate it. And I've seen Mondo definitely dips its toe into like uh, different versions of of. Uh pop cultural figures and characters and stuff. I don't know the Scott Pilgrim character at all. Oh, okay. Um, but I did. The funny thing was as a kid, I ended up one of those pieces that I ended up picking up along the way from a yard sale or something like that was one of those big hollow oh, plastic awesome. Shogun warrior things. Right. Do you remember and which one? 
I, I it's in my garage right now. I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, okay. uh, I'll post pictures of it of it later. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, I I just ruined the story. <laughs> so oh. the point of the story was when once I became an adult collector and started seeing some of the stuff, Mondo Super Seven is doing some stuff like that too. Um, I was like, oh my god, I wish I still had that. I had like a big a remote control Voltron that was about the same height as the Shogun. Uh -huh. uh, figure and I was like I wish I still had it man I, I don't know what ever happened to it and it just so happened I was you know a couple of months ago back home in the home that I was that I grew up in we were cleaning oh, some stuff out yeah it was still there so yeah, that's I actually awesome. have it yeah so I good, is it in it. good shape I need to clean it up because it was pretty dusty and stuff but these things were you know no they're plastic they're what are you going to do to them you know it's, it's got like it stickers on wrist. it okay, yeah so cool. Some of the stickers might be peeling, but he looked pretty good to me. I mean, for my purposes, he's good. Do you know the color scheme? Yes, he's like uh uh like black, blue, red, red, and, Mazinger. Yeah. Mazinger? He's got a little spaceship in his head. Kind of he has like two part. little like wings on either side type thing. Oh no. Oh. That's why I don't know. So I don't know. I'm assuming that there was probably all different. Yeah, companies yeah, yeah. that were making this stuff back then but it's a design that i've seen before it's on only TV. one it's mattel it is mattel okay. okay um it did it look like that i'm just curious no no it's definitely okay. a little bit different than that okay so, so it probably wasn't the, uh shogun so the, specifically oh uh the other I would mean, be sorry i'm just curious now i, I'm not I don't know if you want to take the time i can go grab them <laughs> No, it's okay. oh, that's not it. Uh, it's okay. I'm, I'm, and this comes up all the time, and I always stop to talk about. Does it look familiar? It's not him. Okay, so maybe it might not be a Shogun Warrior, but that's cool, man. Yeah. I love, I love it. That's great. The only other one would be um, Guy King, who was yellow and kind of had a skull. Either way, they were fantastic, especially for that age. We were just talking about like figure size. Can you imagine being a kid? Yeah. Oh, you 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 do remember being kids. Sorry, <laughs> you you got his vintage right. So yeah. Anyway, this is cool. I love what Mondo does. They're they're clearly like they mix that sort of nostalgia thing with the art vibe, and that's totally like that's my jam. I'm curious, what about the Mondo? Was it the Ghostbusters that that that? Was it everything Thundercats? It was really it was really it was really, it was really, every, it was really everything. Yeah. Um. One, I'm a huge Thundercats fan. Anyway. So <laughs> with Mondo doing it, I was like, oh, my God. You know, I've already got a bunch of the Super 7 Ultimates. I've got a cat's lair on the way. Yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> but for so with Mondo doing it, I, I'm not going to go all in on the Mondo line, but I love Thundercats too much not to get like if they do like a ghost Jaga, like I'm I'm going to have to get that guy, you know, um, but the the Ghostbuster sort of stuck out to me because I feel like the Ghostbuster news Almost got buried a little bit, except, you know, obviously uh, uh, Jay from Geek Dad Life is such a huge Ghostbusters fan. He taught he talked about it a lot. Yep. And because we saw Alex Brewer post those fan concept art renders yep. of six inch style real Ghostbuster figures in the fall, we'd already seen them. So Ghostbuster fans like me were already sort of dreaming about that a little bit. Yep. And now that that or something like that is possibly happening, like. All we know is that they're making them right and that they're mm -hmm. six and a half inch real Ghostbusters figures. We don't know for sure if Alex's fan concept art will have anything to do with it or not. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> it's got to like there's got to be it, they've, they know about it. They've seen it. They've talked, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, there was a YHS. YHS were the ones who sort of broke it. And, and Jay mm -hmm. was on that stream and then they, they followed up on Sunday. My understanding is that like. Like they're showing that to give you an idea of where it could go, but uh, but they're gonna, you know, obviously push it, and it's not gonna be that exact thing, and they can't use the ghosts and all that. But either right. way, to me, the big news in that was that Mondo's doing six and a half inch figures, um, which is totally changes the game. Yep, which totally changes the game. Yep, yep. And I know there's limitations because you know other companies make figures in that size so it uh so there's limitations in that i imagine that they couldn't easily um do like oh we're, we did thundercat so we're gonna do smaller versions or he-man um because that's just how uh you know licenses work and you know uh but 
but who knows what else they could do that's the thing it's like with mondo's art department and their like attention to detail and the way they handle things like i'm honestly uh i said this with the the ghost because because they were saying oh we don't get the original ghost or even the ghost from the show like mondo are you kidding like me that anyway yeah but you kidding me mondo's team like creating brand new ghosts hell yeah like that they're, they'll be just fine <laughs> these things are going to be gorgeous so i'm excited for that too even though honestly i'm not like i loved ghostbusters as a kid but it's never been one that i've collected um toys of and so and it's i've got this whole aesthetic i guess going on on my shelf so yeah i had a uh the the only one of the i thought the real the kind of real ghostbusters toys from the 80s were all 80s and probably 90s were awesome. The only one I ever had was Peter Venkman. Mm -hmm. And I think I still have the figure, but not the, uh, the actual, the, the blaster anymore, but I thought it was awesome when Hasbro re-released basically the reissue yeah. of the, and mm -hmm. they're still doing it now yep. uh, because they're really spot on with the vintage figures that Hasbro re-released or re released reissues of those same style figures from back then. Mm -hmm. um, but after getting those for a Ghostbusters fan, that just makes you want modern versions and i did buy the first series of the plasma series mm -hmm. i thought they were okay i just loved having ghostbusters around yep have always you know dabbled with the idea of buying that mezco set one day of the ghostbusters but mm -hmm. nothing there's been nothing else real ghostbusters so well until now, i think it's great man because uh I, again i'm not it's not my thing but i'm just really happy that that any of those properties man that give continue to give them life that's only gonna you know keep them going and it's being done by a really really solid company and like i said six inch figures by mondo is just exciting so mm -hmm. All right, let's keep it going. I know uh, this is a dope thing. I don't really have too much to share other than it's, it's a sculpture. It looks really cool. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a digital sculpt and file from Paul Braddock. And then this guy's studio, Fantastical Creatures, is painting it. And it's just in line with a lot of things that I share and kind of what you've said that like we're in this era where we're like, there's just amazing creative people and there's communities around it. And we have the internet that allows us to see it. And so it's not exactly an action figure, but um, I'm, I'm happy just window shopping. And, you know, maybe this inspires someone for something else later. Didn't really I've never seen a else. more, I've never mm -hmm. seen a more realistic looking crab man in my life. <laughs> cool. Right. The anatomy and yeah, no, it's, it's really good. And it, it looks like I could, yeah, take some of those, whatever those things are, just crack that. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Uh, <laughs> you look delicious. I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's a similar sort of thing, um, just an artist kind of sharing their stuff. I love to look at this stuff and just sort of think of the possibilities. I imagine that, like, you know, a lot of the folks creating figures probably just, you know, also look at this stuff. So I love it. I love looking at art in general. That Not face has a weird it's there's something about it that reminds me of like a monster's ink character. Uh -huh. It's that eye. Yeah. I like right? it's the, it, there's a simplicity of the form in that little tiny eye. It is it's it's cute. It's a cool contrast. Big bulky body. Wait, and is there blood tiny. on his weapon too? Like uh, yeah, there, the there is. There is. Sorry, I was fixated on the, the body paint, but yeah. Oh man, it's just it's a wild, it's a wild time for the imagination, genre fiction, arty, nerdy stuff. But uh let's keep going. You mentioned the not ninja turtles. Um, this is one that 5K uh 5K posted this sort of like prototype coming soon video of the five of sorry, of the rage toys uh not bebop. So it's so fascinating how uh we were talking about earlier, uh the the unlicensed thing so what they're doing is they're releasing this figure that you sort of see in that um you know feudal japan kind of look with the top knot and banner and everything and then likely all the stuff that kind of looks like a character that you're familiar with called bebop might be a separate kit but that's kind of cool because it's like when you get like that version it's kind of like you kind of have to know what you're like when he's just like in the, the samurai version or Shogun version mm -hmm. that looks like it's just a different character. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. 
which I want on my shelf. <laughs> so yeah. I saw that. And then I also was like, but I might want him with a mohawk, you know, or like mix and match. And, and that's the Lego guy slash four horsemen, you know, pop and swap fan in me. And I love sort of seeing them put this together. And um, yeah, I know I keep saying it's fun to be a fan right now. But the other piece of this is we get to see this stuff, right? Here's a prototype. We didn't see that as kids. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's the we have so much access to more information than sort of, you know, we have we've ever had before. We get yep. to see so much before the figures come out. Like mm -hmm. there was something cool when we were younger that you wouldn't have any idea something was coming and then you just saw it in person. It's true. It's that true. is really cool. But there's also something to be said to like seeing how you know and especially now that we're adults like i think a lot of us are interested to see what goes into it how it gets made like mm -hmm. i was on a live stream the other day and we were like talking about of course four horsemen studios and we're like oh yeah you know chris and george you know they're over in china blah 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 and i stopped and i'm like what kind of world is this that we live in that we know yeah. chris and george are in china like it's yeah. bizarre you know yeah so true so true and this stuff is 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 incredible to me i only have the splinter from this line um the master and he's got this cool hat and everything and they're just they're quality toys man the paint the sculpts again these these companies are coming out of nowhere um and or seemingly out of nowhere um but just the level of product that's coming out from them i've i have yet to get something and be like, wow, this is total garbage. I was totally hosed on this um, from like a random pickup at like 5K. Yeah, yeah, I gotta, so. and I, I'm always a little bit fuzzy on 5K's involvement because like 5K is a toy store, right? An online store, but mm -hmm. they are connected with specific uh, figures, unlicensed lines and stuff. I don't know what the connection, like I got the, uh, yeah. People call it the Felix Toys Joker, but it's not Felix, right? The the not Heath Ledger Joker that came right. out through 5K. Mm -hmm. That thing's awesome. Um, yep. Question for you. Yeah. So we're, we're talking about like all these different seeing the, the behind the scenes uh, mm -hmm. and how great it is to be a collector to seeing like this incredible uh, landscape of different figures and stuff. You're a creative person. You were in graphic design. You were in bands. You've created this mm -hmm. channel. Have you already... Or would you ever think about creating your own figure? Um, you know, I asked myself that, and I will just say at this time, I, 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 I don't know. Like, if I could just make it happen, sure. Knowing the amount of work and and the capital and all of that involved, it just doesn't seem in the cards for me, and just the 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 situation i'm in but mm -hmm. so hence you know being able to work with with people that i enjoy like with a walk like um mm -hmm. definitely um have found myself in a weird you know awesome situation working with jason and all the folks at spiro and adam and so i'm happy with that at this moment you know it's kind of like you, you mentioned bands and stuff i was in a band we did a lot we released several records at the touring thing and and then it was like, okay, that was cool. And um, I did the graphic design thing and that was cool. And so I enjoy doing those things. Um, but it, at this point, I think I want to help support folks. If I ever get in a weird position, just to throw it out there of like, if like if Jason were to go, hey man, do you want to design a figure? All about it. <laughs> yeah, hundred um, percent. But going from scratch and starting the whole thing, I. I no, I don't think that's in the cards. And I'll say, you know, I'm a growth mindset person. Maybe someday, possibly, but leaning towards the no. How about you? Oh. Um, no, I ha I haven't. Not that I wouldn't love to contribute. Uh, if if something sort of came up, but there's no, like, I don't have like a character that's been kicking around for years or or sort of anything like that. Um, I really like, uh, I like experiencing the hobby. I like talking yeah. about it. It's sort of like when it comes to the legions lines, like I, I do a little bit of painting, a little bit of popping and swapping, but I always say like, I'll probably never be the best customizer in the world. Mm -hmm. My art that's connected to the figures is making dumb videos about them, like talking about them on a live stream with my friends and making jokes about it or 
making videos and getting lost in the editing process. Like that's probably more where, uh, I'll, I'll probably be at. Um, and there's just right now for me, there's no shortage. There's not much of like, um, a dearth of what I'm looking for. There's, Mm -hmm. and to the extent there's something that I would really love to see. And there are some things I would love to see modern day visionaries done. Right. Um, Um, I don't have much of a doubt that that stuff's all going to happen. You know, for the longest time it was silver Hawks. Um, Mm -hmm. and now that, that now there are silver Hawks, you know, out there and there's some really good ones. Ace did a really great quick silver. Um, I'm excited for super sevens vac metals, uh, uh, silver Hawks that are, uh, coming pretty soon. So, Mm -hmm. um, there's not like, there's not a space for me to fill. There's so much other cool stuff and my creative itch can be scratched in other ways. Yeah. Yeah. I think at this point I'm there, I definitely have characters and ideas. None that honestly, I would say feel super toyetic. Um, so, so I don't know, but again, I love other people's worlds. If you know, yeah if uh, hey jason let's do this or i'm even having fun just being a part of the process and be like hey what if you did the weapon this way or what if you did this and so that that's come up a lot and that's been fun um but but yeah for now i'm i'm with you i'm I'm having fun talking about it i'm having fun looking at it i'm having fun geeking out about it and um that's kind of just where i'm at yeah, and I mentioned it when uh, when you and Jason were kind enough to come on my come on my mm-hmm. show too. It's like you've been filling that role for years, man. Any company out there, if you want to get out there and uh, have a great face for your for your line or your wave <laughs> or your toy, Rick is the man, dude. He he can present this stuff in a really oh, great way. Man. And I'm not just saying that, man. Thank you. I mean, it definitely helps that it's one that I care about. Honestly, like it was in a just I I, I dig a walk, and it was in a. As I've said this before, it's I just feel like it deserves a lot more attention than it's getting. So what anything I can do to help that. Um, well, you sold one I'll guy at it. least. Yeah. Uh, I was <laughs> yeah. A walk yeah. was one of the lines that uh not that I thought it looked cool. Everyone had good things to say about it when they got the figures in hand, but it, you know, uh-huh. you reach a point where you're like, there's gotta be some stuff that I'm like, that's cool. I don't need to buy everything. Yep. Yeah. But you know, now I got this guy in hand. Um <laughs> I'm totally into the new wave. I'm in on the, I was already, I was already in on the new Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, you, you, awesome, you sold man. at least one guy. Good to hear. And they're fun to play with. Once you get them in hand, you're like, Oh wow. Like they can move. And yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. I love that. Hey, uh, we have, I appreciate that you've come to hang out with me. Um, mm-hmm. let's go ahead and start wrapping up. I want to do like, uh, uh, that's what's up. So this is sort of where I, I tend to uh, focus a little bit more on like a creator. And um, I want to start off with something a, a little bit more odd. And I want to start with this. Let's look at some hedgehogs, man. <laughs> um, I got to ask you, do you at all watch like these kinds of videos? Is this something uh, that, that uh-huh. it, it it pops up? Not that I because I've gone searching for it, but because I've taken on the moniker of a, sure. of a hedgehog uh mm-hmm. and i'll and you know for some of my posts and stuff i'll throw like a hashtag a hedgehog hashtag in there mm-hmm. and some that i get like sometimes i'll get followers that are just like people out there looking for hedgehog videos <laughs> oh man <laughs> there's, and there's Where's no the action. hedgehog action <laughs> yes but um <laughs> and i have honestly i've thought about it. i'm like should i get a pet hedgehog they look kind of awesome can I ask? Look at this guy. They're they are pretty awesome. Can I ask where that name comes from? Sure. So it is a, a name that my wife kind of came up with. Um, when we were dating in college, uh, I always joke that it was a very romantic story. Her sorority house was across the street from my fraternity house. Um, <laughs> and when we were dating, I ha- held an office in my fraternity that the Greek name was Hegemon. Uh, and that meant I was the chapter educator. So I was in charge of everyone's grades and I was in charge of the new pledges. Um, and of course she would always, she would stumble over the name and instead of Heg- Hegeman, she would say that I'm the hedgehog. She'd uh, be like, I can come into this party. My boyfriend's the hedgehog. Um, and then as time went on, she just said, well, you're cute and furry like a hedgehog. So you're just going to stay. Uh, that's that'll, that'll be the name. So when I sort of out of nowhere started the toy 
video thing, which was really, uh-huh. it wasn't planned at all. I was like, all right, I need a name. <laughs> What's the, am I just going to use my real name? And I'm like, why don't I just use the head, the nickname my wife gave me hedgehog. And then to make it sound funny and connected to action figures, action. So I picked Got this it. very clunky long name, but that's where hedgehog came from. Well, I am rooting for a hedgehog in Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, man. Oh, snap. I would love that. Here we go. It is hedgehog action. Um, so how long has the channel been around now? The first video was posted on my wife's birthday, uh, July 12th, 2022, I want to say. So we're coming okay. up on two years of the channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's you know early on because I didn't really plan on doing a toy channel i just got some figures in and i'm like literally it was that day i opened it i was like i have to talk about this i'm like i'm gonna film it and put it on the internet um so then it's been like at the beginning there was lots of stops and starts but over the last year uh it's a lot of work it's a you know it's a ton of work but it's a labor of love and it's just this fun silly thing that uh, i love having the videos up i love putting them up and i love connecting to other people through it I remember some of your first ones. It was all about like you with the sort of um, the the green screen thing, but you, it was the tie. It was the tie. Mm-hmm. And then you've kind of slowly moved away from that, but it comes back every now and then. And I just realized I am on my kid's account. But let's look <laughs> at it through here. <laughs> That's funny. Here's the little brick something logo. Okay. So um, let's see. So, uh, yeah, so a couple of things. First off, I remember the old reviews and you, what I appreciated about what you were doing is like me, it seemed like you were exploring different types of toys. So you had all sorts of stuff. It wasn't like, this is the only toys that I looked at. I remember some of the earliest Mezcos that, um, I saw were your reviews. I'd seen other ones, but what I liked about yours was like, it was new to you. And you were kind of discovering this toy line. And I was super, uh, super excited about that. And then you started doing the um, review, uh, the show. So Mm -hmm. Saturday Day Live. Am I saying that right? Yep. It's the day. It's the two days that makes me stumble. Saturday Day Live, SDL, you started doing that. And I'm curious, like, when you, how did that start? How'd you get the folks together and all of that kind of thing? Yeah. So, and so that show, the Saturday day live show, that's mm-hmm. going to be coming up on two years this fall. Holy crap. Um, okay. And this was, so it started that uh, there have been, you know, during the pandemic live streams really started springing up among established YouTubers. Yeah. Um, and then Saturday, the, the live stream again was something that happened very organically without totally being planned. Um, my buddy, Ryan Gonzalez, who I had met, we were both at intern for a day okay. uh, at Four Horsemen Studios back in 2021. That's how I met him and his wife, Amber. And it just so happens that Amber, in- Am- Amber for, Amber a, day for a day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the first, the first couple of the Mythic Legions Cabal, um, they live in Pennsylvania. So we would end up at a lot of the same shows and we would just meet up at the shows and we started keeping in contact and we, mm-hmm. you know, went out to, to eat it after one of the, a couple of the conventions and sort of, we became friends through this thing. And it was Ryan always says, Ryan's going to see this and, 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 and say, stop talking. But, um, <laughs> he, it's true. It was kind of his idea to do the live. Stop stream. talking. Yeah. He's uh-huh. like, he, I don't know. He just, I don't know if he gets, it gets embarrassed about it or whatever, but he's, it was his idea. He was like, he's like, what do you, what would you think about us just hopping on a live stream and just talking about this stuff? And I'm like, I love that idea. Let's do it. Awesome. Um, so there wasn't a lot of planning that went it went into it. Um, and we started a live stream and I think maybe it was the first one. Uh, Eric LeBron, uh, was, you know, hopped into the chat and was like, Hey, can I hop on? And we were like, heck yes. So he hopped on and the three of us just, talked for a couple of hours and then it just never stopped. Um, Mm. and it really was just three guys talking about toys. And, you know, I try to add my little, you know, producer ish type tendencies into it where I try to put graphics in and experiment with video a little bit and put together a slideshow, but you know, it happened sort of really organically. Um, and it's been, it's fun. We have like a little, you know, it's a tiny little show, but we have a a little audience that shows up, you know, whenever we, um, 
we're ready to go and we have some really cool people that are cool enough to come on as guests like like yourself a few weeks ago um so i just have a blast like even if you know i can't even i can't do that do that live stream without putting work into it or whatever but it's the kind of thing that every time it ends i'm like oh i wish we were going for like another four hours I was trying to find the the review, but uh, you you you're even getting now. So you'll do reviews, but you're getting like you got a chance to do an exclusive Legion's figure reveal. Yes. So I was awesome that I was like super excited. Uh, Jeremy Gerard, the director of sales and marketing for the four horsemen. Again, I'd met him from going to a bunch of shows or whatever. And he's always been, he is just a, the, everybody at the studio is very cool. He's a very cool guy and he's been very supportive of me and my tiny little channel. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, he just said, you know, he's like, I got an idea, you know? Uh, and he just reached out one time. He's like, would you like to do, we have a wave coming out. Would you like to do a reveal? And I was like, Yes, whatever you yes. want me to do, just tell me when I'm there. I'm into it. And it was cool, man. It was just such a cool experience. Um, what I, I almost got to do it twice because uh at this guy right here at RetroCon mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania last year, um I got to do like a a gorilla style review first yep. time in hand of this cosmic legions figure we literally set up on the side of the the, the convention and did it uh but the reveal was the relic guard from the reinforcements two wave where nobody knew what it was it was a brand new figure uh and essentially you know i got you know sent the figure you don't tell anybody about it you can't show it to anybody film how a review. long how early uh did you get it and before you you could reveal it it was it was a plenty of time. It might have been a couple of weeks. I want to say it was at least a couple of weeks to okay. put together the review. Um, and then, you know, you were given a date, you know, that, you know, it's such and such a date to 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 post it. Uh, try to do it early in the morning if you can. Um, and it was cool the way that wave was released. Each figure in the wave was revealed by a different YouTuber. And mm -hmm. it was like a cool experience, like in the cabal where all the fans, like in the morning, they got up and ran to YouTube to see what the new reveal was. You know, one day it was D amazing. One day it was toy bro. Uh, one day it was me. One day it yep. was Carlos. Yep. Like so cool. It was a cool thing just to be a part of it. And like, it was also a lot of pressure because I'm like, you want to do a good job. You don't want to do a crappy review. And uh, I was like trying to make it funny and stuff. And it's like, I hope other people laugh at this. Um, so yeah, th this is it that we're seeing right here. The relic guard will always be a special figure in my heart. That's awesome. Uh, man. And it's just, oh, I was just so happy to be a part of it. You know, the, the dio you're using too is gorgeous. Whose work is that? So that is Lone Wolf Labs, uh, my buddy Kevin. He is also based out of New Jersey. That's a funny story a little bit, too, was I had uh, seen Kevin's work. Uh, he sets up uh, at ToyCon New Jersey a lot, and he does all kinds of really cool dios, high-quality dios for, like, really affordable prices. Um, and I had talked – I where I'd thought about buying some dios from him anyway, so I reached out to him. Uh, and then when I knew this figure, when I was going to do this reveal, I was like, I want to change the way I do this review. Cause up until then, I think I was just doing like a light box. Um, but I was like, I want to do this with some dio pieces. So then I, you know, I set it up with Kevin, uh, mm -hmm. and typically he just, you know, sets up at shows, but he let me come to his house. And I, the day I happened to pick was like a day where like New Jersey was hit with these ridiculous torrential rainstorms, oh, man. It was flooding and stuff. But Ooh, I went man. out anyway, talked to him. He cut me a great deal. I got a couple of dios, put it in the review, put it up. And then after I put it up, Kevin messaged me. He's like, now I understand why you drove through a rainstorm to my house. Uh, and it was because I wanted to get those dios and I'd already set my schedule. And I was like, if I can get them today, I got to get them today. Yeah. Yeah. Because you had a mission. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, no, I remember a lot of those early ones. They were like a, a basically like a white background light yep. box, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I it was got it. just it's right over there. The way to do it, man. It was just like, you know, it's just out of necessity. Let's just let's just create. And then you, you do occasionally because you're going to so many shows, you're meeting different people. I love mm -hmm. this, man. Some of my favorite people you get to talk to. Here's you mm -hmm. and Dan Larson which is great. Um, it's, it's like, isn't it funny how we somehow found ourselves basically running like 
a TV station slash <laughs> TV show, and we get to play at being like these, you know, these these, these interviewers and produce it. And here's with you with one of my favorite customizers, Arthur Zoran. Arthur Zoran who I got yeah. to hang out with um, out here when he visited. I had bought one of his figures and he's like, Oh, I come to San Francisco and got to hang out with super cool. Um, Arthur is, is it just a beautiful, beautiful person who exudes such positive energy and like, it's just, you know, he's not like a super show, like showy person, but like when you could, when you saw all of his like incredible artwork and it's just mm -hmm. like, you just, it's like, dude, this is incredible. What you've created here is amazing. And he's almost like he's getting embarrassed and stuff. But yeah. it's like he's like beautiful. Arthur Zoran, search him out on Instagram if you don't know. Already. Yes. And then check if you can make it to Legion's Con, go and check out his work, man, because he's one of the best customizers in the world. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. Oh, good job, John, splicing in some, <laughs> of, the, uh, some of his stuff here. Um, but yeah, Perfect I'm, timing, I'm, man. I'm so happy that you picked some of this stuff to to put in here because that's probably I love making the videos and I love trying to make, you know, put put my own little jokes in the videos and stuff. But my favorite thing to do, my favorite thing to do is to actually just talk to people mm -hmm. um, and then try to, sh to share that. Um, and I've just been so fortunate that people have been willing to, you know, sort of give me some time. Like I'm not giving them hardly anything. Like I'm not giving them, I'm not broadcasting them to like thousands, like thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Um, but I'm just excited to talk to them and I sort of want to share that excitement. And, you know, I'm trying to, each time I do it, I try to make it a little bit better. Um, every time I watch one of these interviews, I'm happy cause I'm talking to this person, but I'm like, yep. all right, how can I, how can I make this more enjoyable for the viewer? How can I make it more enjoyable for the person I'm talking to? But I just feel very fortunate to have talked to people like Arthas and Dan Larson and Bobby Valla yeah. and like all these other people. It's really cool. I love it, man. And you do, you're great. I love seeing you sort of talk to people. You're even doing like visits to stores and that's the thing. You've got so much variety in your channel. Um, I, I love it. So I just wanted to purposely like kind of show people what's over there. So head over there, do the whole like and subscribe thing. Really like we're doing this for the love Thank and you, it's really helpful. People don't realize I look at you you got the fam in there. So cool. Yes. Um, yeah, I think it's great. So people, please understand the value of you going over and hitting like on these videos and letting them run and letting them play in the background when you're not at home. It's actually super helpful. Subscribe, of course. But for real, like he's got way more variety and awesome content than I've got going on over here. And so it's it's cool stuff. And I love that you seem to explore. Is that kind of what are you intentionally exploring till you land on something or are you like you're like oh i'm bored now let's do something different like how, how do you end up landing on because there's a variety of stuff on your channel man it, the and the truth uh, of it all brick is that it's this much <laughs> of what i end up if I, of what i want to do or what i plan yeah. to do yeah i'm like a goldfish yeah. i swear to god yeah. i'm like i'm like i'm like oh uh, oh uh, oh uh -huh. like at any sure. given time, I've got 20 things all in process a little bit. You know, uh, some of them are just plans in my head. Some of them, a few of them I have stuff written out. Some some of them I actually have footage that started. Um, so there's a lot of different things that I that I want to do. Um, and it's just, you know, whichever one sort of catches fire sort of at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, that's why even though I love doing reviews, it's tough to be a captive to like, doing a review and trying to be the first one to get it out there. Yeah. Um, I'm not. So I there's, do there's, it. <laughs> there's other things that like, I really like, I love going out, like I said, and talking to people, mm -hmm. showing people things that they didn't know about or that they can't be at where it's a, whether it's a show or a toy store That's right. or, or something like that. Um, it's just, and that's probably why sometimes it gets a little bit eclectic. Now, you know, the lesions are my favorite line. So there's definitely going to be a focus there. Um, but it's, you know, there's, it's just kind of whatever sort of catching my fancy and whatever naturally lines up. So one thing can sort of lead to another. And I also, you know, I try to like, you'll see that like, I, one thing that's so great about this hobby, man, is that I just feel so comfortable, uh, involving my family in it. 
Mm-hmm. Like I take my kids to shows, I'll take them to, to the toy store or whatever. And it's just, it, they become things that we sort of do together. And if I can do that, take video while we're there and turn that into, to a video that people might find fun or interesting. It's like, it's like a win, win, win. It's a triple win. Now I could do this for days. Like, you know, that, that, cause it's what I would do if I come across a shop and I just look at stuff. And so I'm just sitting here. Yeah. Cool. Show me more. Even the boxes. I was laughing. Cause I was like, I'm just looking at boxes right now, but I'm like totally <laughs> gross. And I'm so, but it's cool. Cause this place, this is a, a toy store in New Jersey. Uh, uh, Comic okay. Fortress, fantastic shop, Somerville, New Jersey. Uh, they've just got like this section of the wall that's nothing but Star Wars hot toys of like yeah. in the box, you know? So good, yeah. And to- toy stores, and like this is like a comic collectible shop, like a, a lot of them are. They're so great because you're always, always going to find something that you've either never seen before or forgot existed. I love yeah. that stuff. Yep. Oh, man. So definitely head over to Hedgehog Action on YouTube. Um, You know, head in there, click subscribe, click all of the things. Check out a bunch of videos. Let them play. Check out Saturday Day Live, um, 6 p.m. your time, 3 p.m. Pacific, right? Yep, correct. So we've played around with a... a Yes, no, that's right. We've played around Sorry. with a bunch of different times, but we've sort of settled in at that 6 p.m. 6 p.m. time slot. Every once in a while, it will change depending on availability. Usually that's my fault. Um, mm-hmm. Or like, uh, was it last week? We uh, were lucky enough to have the guys from the Euro Legions podcast mm-hmm. on with us. And because they're in the UK and Luxembourg, we went a little bit earlier. So every sure. once in a while, it'll change. But Cool. And then... Uh... And folks, yeah, you can want to follow uh, Jonathan over at Hedgehog Action on Instagram. You know, get in touch with him. As you can tell, super personable, loves to talk geek. So, so hit him up. Um, and yeah, if you're kind of, yeah, just build a relationship because clearly this dude is super friendly, super warm, and we value that. I think people need to realize that. Like, we really value that aspect of this uh, hobby. Right. Meeting I folks pre- connecting. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate the kind words. And yeah, of course, you know, the, you know, subscribing and hitting the notification bell. So when you know stuff happens, mm-hmm. that's cool because a lot of that stuff, you know, it, it's always, you know, a, 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 an event is cooler if, if you have a cool crowd there. So I appreciate it's it, man. True. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. Um, we are recording on a weeknight, so I, I, I'm thankful that you hung out, and I'm sorry that I took so much of your time, but um, I, I hope you had a good time looking at Needless Ephemera. <laughs> uh, 100%, man. And thanks for, thank you for letting me come on your show and, and ramble on for so long. No. I had an absolute blast, man. Would love to have you back Treat- on the, the show on my channel whenever you want, bro. Yeah, man. And I, I'm looking forward to November. That's that's the deal, man. I'm excited to see everybody hanging out. I'm, but we're both going to be geeking out on, on uh, at G-Con with whatever it is that they're going to throw in front of us. So looking forward to be able to do that. It's going to be awesome. Sure. Here, promise me. We'll take we'll take the picture when we meet for the first time in person and uh, maybe some dual interviews. Who knows? Whatever. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> that's right. The whole channel thing. Um, yes, absolutely. I love it. All right, folks, um, I'm maybe I'm driving right about now and heading back because, you know, it's going to be a Sunday evening. And I, as I always say, I hope everyone has a wonderful week um, because, you know, life is life is unfortunately filled with those days when you got to work. But then hopefully you get to go home and play with cool toys or hang out with folks like us online and just geek out. So. Once again, Jonathan, Hedgehog Action. Go check it out. Thanks again, Jonathan, for doing this pre-record with me. Hope everyone's doing great and continues to have a wonderful week. Peace, power, yeah, metal. That's what look I got. Two of them goes, yeah. All right, folks. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.